Hello and welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries. Today I've got some news around the gearbox. Now, if you go and have a look down the channel, I've got a whole video about the plan for the gearbox. So I'm not gonna run through the details again, but suffi suffice to say, we're making our own gearbox and it's going to be a two-speed gearbox to drive a chain on either side of the bike. And in order to make that, we need to make the case for it, we need to make the end plates, and we also need to make a new main shaft. Now this is a main shaft off a standard Norton Commando gearbox, and it's there as a bit of a template for us uh, to take some measurements off and to draw up our own gearbox shaft. What we need to do is to make another one of these with a much longer splined section. That center spline section will probably come all the way to my thumb. Um, and cutting a spline is really quite a difficult operation. It's probably been broached on in the original. Somebody's made a, 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 a brooch to do that operation and they would heat up this uh, piece of steel so it's cherry red and pull it through the brooch. That's generally how splines are cut. Uh, this is a standard shaft with a standard um, sliding dog assembly on the spline and that's what we're going to be using to engage the, the two gears. There's no actual gears in the gearbox up there. there. Um, just by swapping the dogs. But I'm going to call it a gearbox to keep it simple. So there's a there's a bit of play. This is a brand new part and there's still a bit of play in them. Um, and cutting the, the spline is, is a bit of a tricky operation. Now, my mate Matt, who, you, who you'll remember from some of the other videos, he said, oh, I can do it. So I said, all right then, go on then. And uh, he took away this and he's got a piece of old scrap steel and you can see he's done a cracking job there of cutting a spline really good and that's on his CNC machine rather than broaching it through and when I put the parts together there's actually less play in Matt's spline than there is on the ball one so I'm really chuffed with that I think what Matt's probably done is take these two to the same diameter so we can have another go uh, every time this is uh, attempt number two first attempt was pretty good every time you do something like this you get slightly better at doing it you you hone the technique um, and that's a real good spline on that shaft so at some point what I need to do now is to take the steel I bought to make the actual shaft and rough out the outside dimensions to cut the threads on either side so we can bolt on the, the clutch to drill a hole all the way through, which is gonna be quite a tricky operation because it's a long hole to be drilled all the way through and get that to mat to cut the spline. Then it goes away to get hardened and when it's hardened, it gets ground to final size. So there's a fair bit to do on it, but I'm very chuffed with this spline. It appeared in the microwave of dreams, which is the way that we teleport things around the village where we live. Uh, we have a, an old microwave outside our houses, and when you put the item into the microwave, it gets collected at the other end. It's all very, very smart. Um, right, so that's the, the shaft end of it. Other update I've got on the gearbox just over here, that way is the gearbox case. Now the gearbox case isn't finally finished to size, but it's pretty close. This is the cotton reel that was in the big Churchill lathe next door. Uh, and Bob's roughed out mostly to final dimensions. This outside diameter can come down a fair bit. These bits need to be a bit thinner and the inside, the, the edges here need to be just shaved a tiny bit. But it's been quite a difficult operation, Bob tells me. You can see that end when you're, when you're putting it in the lathe, but you can't see this end because it's a, um, a blind um, radius at this side. So it had to come out of the forge and get turned round and clocked in to, to uh, machine down that end, come out of the forge or turned around, get clocked into machine down this end, which would then be over there. Um, a bit tricky to, um, uh, to explain without having the, the thing in front of the forge or, but um, I think you kind of get the point. It was, a, it was a bit of a mission. So that, that's slightly over diameter this way, but you, you get an idea of the size of the gearbox and it definitely isn't going to look like a Norton box or an AMC box or an old Jap box or a Harley box. Nobody's going to look at it and go, oh yeah, well it's a Norton gearbox, which is kind of the point. So um, it's actually quite a bit smaller than I expected as well. It means that there is room I think to put a battery box behind it because that, that that is quite a large battery that's off my uh, big motor guzzy that's the box from the battery so literally this is a battery box um, and that does fit in that gap there although it doesn't give much room to adjust the chain that the primary 
primary uh, drive will be a, a belt so it shouldn't need that much adjusting but there isn't that much room to adjust things so by, by taking this diameter down a bit we will have a bit more adjustment and we could of course get a slightly smaller battery to help as well but it also means there's plenty of room now underneath here to bring the fuel tank down a bit deeper. We could bring the fuel tank across and up here, just missing the diner start um, up to there. So that, that means we'll get a fair bit more fuel volume in. Um, and I think that looks quite nice. I, I like the fact we've got the, the, the completely round engine case in the engine plates. And we've got the round gearbox as well. And it, it will look... A little bit trick so those are all gearbox updates there's a bit more work to do on the case there's a lot more work to do on the shaft we still have to make the side plates to hold the bearings but there is good progress in that area while we're waiting for a couple of other things to happen on the the engine so i've got this week off work for easter i'm hoping to get a fair bit done this week so stand by for a few more updates hopefully and as usual thank you for watching